we want to do is we want to figure out how to graph this thing on a TI calculator. Okay, so this is what we call a piecewise function. Because as you can see here, for different parts of the domain of X, uh, we have different graphical representations. And so part of the challenge is, is that when I want to graph this piecewise function, if I plug it into a TI-84 calculator and I hit graph, what happens is it graphs across the whole domain. So the issue here is, is how do I restrict the domain? How do I get it to just go from uh, use the function 3x squared minus 2 for only the x values less than or equal to 1 and then use 2x minus 1 as my graphical representation for all x values greater than 1. Well, you can do this on a TI-84 calculator. You just have to do it a little differently. Um, first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to change that little yellow line. I bet you could barely see it on the screen. So if you ever are curious about how you would change the color, um, just go into your Y equals menu and then select, um, use the cursors to select uh, colors that you want. I don't know, let's choose like a uh, red. All right, so that should do it. Come down here, whoops, hit OK. And now when I hit graph, it should draw a red line. There it is. And so as you can see here, this is not exactly the piecewise function uh, that, I have that I have defined for my, for my actual function. Okay. Uh, right now we're graphing 3x squared minus 2 across the whole domain, which is all real numbers. And then uh, we are graphing 2x minus 1, which is a linear function across the whole domain, which is, lin you know, um, it's a straight line. But I don't want to do that. I want to restrict it. I only want to use this function for x values less than 1 and this function for x values greater than 1. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, one way that I could do that is I could just come in here and I'm going to clear this out. And what you want to do is you want to put your function in parentheses. So we're going to say 3x squared minus 2 and then close your parentheses. Now right after that we do, we set the parameters of uh, what our x values are going to be. So I'm going to choose x. And then right here is the math button, but notice right above the math button in blue it says test. So we're going to click second math to get into the test menu. And I want the less than or equal to. Okay, I want that less than, oops, I clicked it one too many times, or equal to. And then I'm going to choose one. And then for our next function we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to in parentheses put 2x minus 1 and then I'm going to put x second test. I'm going to choose the greater than symbol which is 3 and then choose 1. Now when I graph it I get a completely different function. Okay. Now when I graph it, now what I could do is notice that where the two lines meet up, I have a straight line and then I have a straight line here. Now the reason, and I did this intentionally, the reason that occurs is because I graph these as two separate functions. So one way I could fix that and make it one smooth graph, we don't want that by the way, just in case you're wondering. One smooth graph would be is to put the plus sign here and then put 2x, whoops, 2x minus 1, open parentheses, and then put x is greater than one. And I'm going to clear out the second function. So those of you that remember like um, symbolic um, gestures, remember that we can have sets 
and we add the sets together and we use the word and and union and things of that nature, when we put the plus sign between the two functions like this, it's like saying and. Um, so now when I graph it, I have my function f of x as defined in the way that I wrote it down. 